Hola gringas and gringos and welcome to Gringos R Us. Expats with a plan. I'm Mark. I'm Gina. This week we're going to wrap up San Luis Potosí. What we like, what we didn't, and how much it cost. Coming up right after this. Welcome back. So this is our, pretty much our regular, what did it cost us to live there wrap up video. And what we liked and didn't like. Yes, and would this place make our list as a location that we would want to permanently live? For me, that's pretty easy, but right now we only had to compare it against two others, so. Sure, sure, so. Um, we're going to also show you how it compares to the first two locations that we have stayed in simply because I would like it if we could show you the current place and then show you the highest and the lowest yep. as we proceed through on our journey. So I would say let's start with the things that we like about San Luis Potosí. Okay. I want to say that I am really, really loving the lack of isolation. I, I, this was the first place where we were, where we were in walking distance of just about anything that we needed, and I liked that a lot. Now, part of that is not necessarily totally against Zakia mm -hmm. and against uh, San Luis po or San Miguel de Allende. It just happened to be that we had a place mm -hmm. that was more accessible, and, and did that make a difference? Yes. Yes, it did. It didn't even matter that virtually no one that we met spoke any English at all. That's okay. There was a few people who did, but it forced us to speak more Spanish, mm -hmm. which was perfectly wonderful for us because we need that. A uh, lot. Something else I liked, and I think it was evident in the video uh, up here about us going to Centro. You looking for it, honey? Oh, okay. <laughs> It was cosmopolitan. I think that's the word I'm looking for. And it just dawned on me. I was responding to a question. Um, someone has asked why there was a fleur de lis on one of the cathedral windows. And I'm like, that's a very good question. And so I did some research quickly to identify why would there be something that is symbolic with France on the window of this church and I realized first of all they call it a cathedral that's a very French thing and sure it's translating into Spanish as well but it's a cathedral and then I realized uh, the state and the city are literally named after Saint Louis King of France it it's named after Louis the ninth I believe it was I still don't quite know what the French connection yet is, and I apologize, but I wanted to bring that up. It's an Academy Award winning movie with Gene the Hackman. French, you're right. <laughs> okay, I'm just, I just want to clarify but, so you knew what the French connection was. But it, it, it suddenly struck me, um, because I've been to France. I was a foreign exchange student in high school, mm -hmm. and I've been to Paris, I've been to Lyon. That's what it was. There are buildings in San Luis Potosi that are very French. They are very French. Oui, oui. It is the most European influenced location we've been to yet, frankly. Yeah. It really has been. And that appealed to me on that level. I, I like the juxtaposition of the newer and the older as well. But I definitely, that, that's what's resonating with me. There was a lot of French influence in that city. Well, and the fact that you could easily walk to see all of that architecture. Mm -hmm. I mean, the sidewalks are wide, mm -hmm. the terrain is flat, it was a very comfortable temperature. I don't think it ever reached the point. And we were there um, May into April into May. April into May. And, okay. and um, it was very comfortable the entire time. Um, it started to get a little bit rainy at the end. That you know, but well, we were approaching rainy season, mm -hmm. and I had spoken about how dusty it was. Well, we were right at the end of uh, the dry yep. season, so I imagine that that yeah. decreases. 
you know, um, but the terrain was wonderful. The people were fantastic. Mm -hmm. Love the Hardeen. Love the fact that that particular city, you had access to just about all the shopping that you could want. Now, what we didn't do, and this is regretfully uh, being reported to you, is we did not go to one single museum. And they have some wonderful museums there. And I, I am personally a museum person. Um, well, we had three weekends there, and you were in Kansas City for one of them. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, and, and another one was your birthday. So, realistically, we thought we had time, then all of a sudden, bang, it was gone, yeah. and, and we were packing up. And I think it has led us to the belief that we do probably owe San Luis Potosi another month. Another pass. We need to go through and, and return and spend some more time and see more than what we saw. Maybe even sample a different neighborhood. Uh, you know, just so we're not so fixated on, you know, the, the Tequisquia Pond. But there's things there that I wanted to do and wanted to see and we just ran out of time. And of course we have friends there now too, so. Yes, and, and I gotta go back and get my churros. Oh, the churros. I'm just, you know. I would say that was one of the things he really liked were the churros. Well, I think I think that the churros were sort of the icing on the cake of being able to walk down to the Hardeen and walk around and enjoy the beauty of the authentic Mexican experience of yeah. walking around there, seeing the families, having fun, the young couples, the old couples, um, and everybody seemed to be smiling, having a good time there. And then I got to get a churro on top of that. <laughs> hey. Got to get the churro. So funny. Yeah, I mean, they had to say bye to me when I told them, you know, because they were fixing the churro. And, you know, ah, no, no mas. You know, yeah, got to leave. They got to recognize them. They really did. When they um, were fixing them before I you know, even got up there. So. And I guess we, we have to discuss were there any things about San Luis Potosi that we really did not care for or just something that didn't resonate with us or our lifestyle? I know, I'm thinking about it. Um, I mean, okay, if we're going to name a few things, I, I promise you these are not deal breaker things at all, but we should, we should bring them up. We were in a really high apartment. Um, well, that's yeah, and that and that's on. No, we're not. We're, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that that's not on. It's just, pretty regular that if you live in a building that's three, maybe four floors, it's often going to be a walk up. There's no elevator, not always. Often, if it's newer construction, yeah, you'll probably get an elevator. I don't know how old this building was. It didn't seem that old, but the point was, it was a walk up, and to walk up four flights of stairs with all your junk all the time, eh, you get some exercise, but it can get... Ain't ever happening again. He's not doing, we're not doing it again. No. <laughs> not in our situation anyway. No. With all our stuff. Now, if we lived there and all of our stuff was in there and we weren't planning on leaving, eh, you know, well, still no. He says still no, okay. Do you want, do you want to do that in 10 years? Okay, no, he's right, he's right. As you get older, that gets harder to do, and then, and then what? Then you're a prisoner in your apartment. Uh -huh. um, but that, that's not really... That's, that's not, not on the city. That's not on the city. That's on, that's on um, where we chose the Airbnb. The only other thing I could think of, and this would be city, this would be cultural, honking on the horns, man. And, it, and again, it's not a deal breaker. It's not like we've no, never it, been in a city where people lay on the horn obnoxiously. It, it, this it, wasn't that I mean, bad. yes, it was not something we had heard in Caretro right. or San Miguel. Right. And it was a little bit of a shock. But, you know, just like the barking dogs, just like the fireworks, yeah, you get used by to the it. end of it, it really was... Okay, that's just part yeah. of that's part of the white and, noise of San Luis Potosi. And I promise you, if you've been to any major U.S. city, it, it was nothing. No. This was nothing compared to that. 
No, this wasn't people laying it on their horn. No. They just toot them. It was a toot. You know, and, and <laughs> you know, the, 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 the sound that the police cars make, you know, that we thought yeah, we couldn't we thought figure. Yeah, we thought it was a cell phone or a phone ringing. A phone ringing, and, and we <laughs> found out that actually it's a sound that the police cars make mm -hmm. as they were driving down, and and so, you know, those are just the ambient sounds, and I don't think any of it kept us awake at night. No, never. You know, never. and... You know, we only had air conditioning for two nights there. Well, let me rephrase that. I only had air conditioning for two nights there. Um, but we never really needed it. Nope. No. Um, now, that may not be the case now, but, you know, when we were there. No, and I will say this. Although we were in an area of town that had very flat terrain, and although Centro has very flat terrain, Mark and Paulette from the Two Travelers in Mexico are in an area that does not have flat terrain. There are some hills. Yeah, that, 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 that one hill that, getting that, into their going, neighborhood. The going down it's like a little roller up. coaster ride yeah. getting to their neighborhood. So yeah, I mean, it's not that it's all flat. It really all depends on where you choose to Yeah, live. I mean, if you can imagine, it's basically on the valley floor surrounded by mountains. And the further out you go and the closer you get to the mountains, the terrain did change. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, but but even where they were at, the hills there in their particular neighborhood to walk to the Oxo or something or walk right. to the pizza place, it was a lot less than what we encountered in mm -hmm. San Miguel. Yeah, so that's true. And the other thing about the neighborhoods, uh, really, it's going always going to depend on where you choose to live mm -hmm. within that location. I don't feel the traffic at any point in time when we were there was nearly as bad as the traffic can get in Querétaro. No, but, but first of all, they don't have the population right. that, that Querétaro has, and they don't have the construction to right. try and fix the lack of road that Querétaro is, is aggressively trying to continue yep. to add more yep. roads to accommodate this increase in vehicles. Right. But for the time being, all that construction just continues to build, you know, the traffic right. even more. But then when we went back through it on our way to Veracruz, that one part that they were doing the two months of construction while we were there on, yeah. that was finished. So the, yeah. they, they really are hustling and trying to do it as quickly as they can. And you can see that when it's gonna be done, it's gonna help alleviate. Mm -hmm. But there's parts that mm -hmm. of Corretro that's just, you know, not gonna get a whole lot better. And there were parts... Well, closer, the closer you get to town, yeah. basically. And, and the worst parts, I think, traffic-wise, that we had in San Luis Potosí were both the coming and the leaving. Mm -hmm. That was that was the, the worst traffic we encountered, and even that wasn't, it wasn't horrible. It wasn't that bad. You know. So we're going to talk a little bit about the expenses now and then we'll wrap it up at the end. I will be occasionally, well we both will, be occasionally looking over to the side just a bit uh, because I have the data pulled up so that we can see it. I have it all blown up nice and big so... So hopefully I don't get the sweaty guy guys doing them. <laughs> uh, the goal all this time was for us to try to keep it at less than 3,000 US dollars per month. We kind of failed once again. However, I think it's important to note that when we started this journey, the exchange rate was yeah. about 20 pesos per US dollar. Yeah. And about the time we hit San Luis Potosi, it was 18 pesos. Yep. At the time we're doing this video. In July. Of in July of 2023. It is hovering just above 17 pesos. Actually this week at one point it actually went below 17 and then right rebounded back right. up. So. so while the peso is relatively stable price wise as we talk about what we spent on this and this and this how much we're actually spending in U.S. dollars is increasing. Yes, because we're, I mean, we, we basically lost uh, a little over 10%. Yeah. So at the time I made this video, I went with 17.2 mm -hmm. for the exchange rate from peso to dollar. And 
we started out with the Airbnb. We only stayed one month, yep. so literally 28 days actually. Yeah. For our Airbnb, our USD price that we paid for back when we had a 20 peso exchange rate was $1,400 for four weeks. Now, keep in mind, we book almost a year out. Mm -hmm. And when we did this, it actually is benefiting us because we were able to A, get the lower Airbnb prices, mm -hmm. and B, we were taking advantage of the stronger US dollar versus the Mexican peso. Right, right now, we're sort of hesitant to book I mean, we're booked all the way through next April, but to pull the trigger on the other two, if in two weeks it were to somehow rise back up to 18, you know. We'll probably book another one. Well, and, 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 and all this is done in U.S. dollars anyway, so it really doesn't make much difference for us as far as what we pay, but it will as far as what we tell you. Right. Because of the, you know, it being dollars and then when we convert it to the peso and do it at the right. current rate so. so when i tell you right now as far as the airbnb price that we pay i'm giving you the usd us dollar price that mm -hmm. we actually paid at the time we booked and at that time it was 20 peso exchange rate so i'm actually giving you the pesos at that exchange rate right just so you understand that so in comparison we spent $1,400 on our Airbnb in San Luis Potosí, but we spent $1,709 per month in San Miguel de Allende. Now, we got more house. Oh yeah. A whole lot more house. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, we had three king beds in, in, mm -hmm. in San Miguel de Allende. We had one king, and then we had a closet for a second bath, bedroom. Yeah. I mean, that, that it, it, it easily was three times the amount of space. It, it really was, and the kitchen was bigger. Uh, Which didn't take much. The rooftop patio was about the same size, but had more amenities. Yeah. You know. Had the bathroom, had the jacuzzi. Right, right. And, and so. And had, had the killer view. Now, the view from San Luis Potosí was pretty good, too, but. It was. But there was a difference of about three hundred and nine dollars. Um, it was less in San Luis Potosi in this instance, but we did get more space. So we only did one thing that actually cost us money to do. We took a tour bus. Well, yeah. And the tour bus literally cost us two hundred pesos. So that breaks down to about twelve dollars for the month. I spent that on churros. Oh, he easily spent that on churros. Oh my goodness. Groceries, okay. When I pulled this data up, it blew my mind. And I think we learned a valuable lesson. So we did. Let's just discuss this for a minute. We spent about the same, actually a little bit more on groceries when we went from the Queretaro area to the San Miguel area. Yep. And we chalked that up to the fact that we were buying groceries pretty consistently from an expensive grocery store because that really was our only option. We had City Market and, their, and the sister store across the street, La Comer, right. and they had the same prices. Yep. And, and they were, oh, there's a lot of imported items in there from the US and other countries. It costs more to shop there. Yep. If you want that convenience and those items, you're gonna pay more. And we just figured, okay, it's because it's San Miguel. And then I pulled up the data for San Luis Potosi. Now, I had to go through and double check. I'm like, how did we spend the equivalent of $833 on groceries in one month? We have never done that. Well, we had a couple trips to Costco. Yes, we did. And we had a membership to Costco. Yes, that was we did. 25 right there. We. Had a birthday party. Had a birthday party. We bought a lot of alcohol. We bought alcohol. We bought a cake. Yeah, I mean we uh, we went over. But but I think but I think the biggest thing that we did learn is that we could buy and spread out the, the purchases more in San Miguel because we were there for three months. Yeah. Whereas when we got 
to the last getting ready to pack, start packing up for to leave San Luis Potosí, we had a lot of remnants. We and, wasted a yeah, lot of food. And, and so I think what we learned is that we need to buy less yeah. on these shorter stays. Yeah. And I think that when in Better Cruise we accomplished that a lot more efficiently yeah. than what we did in San Miguel because we learned or no, from San Luis Potosí because we learned that okay no you 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 don't need to buy this much because at the end you're going to be going you're throwing it out yeah I mean at the end of our stay in San Luis Potosí and it didn't help the fact that I wasn't even there for a week no so we had I mean I literally just threw out. Two packages of cheese. Three, three, three months later. Yeah. That I bought three months ago, that I still haven't eaten yet. Why did I even have it? Because I thought it was going to be the same type of cheese that I typically like, and I bought it at Costco. And what's Costco? You buy things in bulk. bulk. Do we need bulk? Nope. No. There are some things at Costco that I like, and I like having that membership, and it's so affordable to have it in Mexico because it's like half the price or less than it is in the U.S. There are some things I like. Uh, like Costco has this Nordic salmon with uh, dill sauce, and, and I love it, but they're the only ones that sell it. Albacore tuna. They have albacore tuna. Mark does not like regular tuna, um, well, but they have albacore. Um, there's things we do like, but do we need to buy, you know, big bulk things? No. Well, we do in the tuna because we well, carry tuna, it with us. It's canned. It's canned, yes. You know, so there were, we threw out some yeah. stuff, man. We, we were did. just dumping food, and that was a, it was yeah, a, it's a lesson learned. Yes, it was. Yeah. So I, I was just, I couldn't believe we spent that much. And, and I can say that while she was gone, I didn't go to the grocery store. Oh. So, I mean, I mean we, we, we basically hit, did that in three weeks. So. We literally had hit up every grocery store in San Luis Potosí by chain. We had gone to Soriana, H-E-B, Chitrawi, and we hit the bodega down the street, mm -hmm. and we went to Costco twice. Yes. So we spent way too much on food there. Yep. <laughs> if, I had, if there were street dogs in my neighborhood, they would have been really happy dogs. But we didn't have any. So. No, I had to throw him up on the roof to Rowdy. Oh, Rowdy would have enjoyed it. Okay, so here's another thing, and, and this is important to note. The amount of money that we spend on insurance does not change. No. Nope. Because we bought this in U.S. dollars, and we pay for it either monthly or pay for an entire year policy in the case of the car insurance. Right. So it's always the same amount, U.S. dollars. But it's going to look different in pesos this month because... The peso dropped, or yeah. the peso rose against right. the dollar. So, so it looks a little different there, but we're going to say that it was 5,246 pesos for the month, and that includes an entire one-year policy for car insurance mm -hmm. in Mexico, and that includes a monthly policy for... Our medical. Our medical, which we get through Safety Wing. Mm -hmm. We have their nomad insurance policy. Uh, yeah, we'll link put, down below. Links down below if you're interested in getting something like that. We don't. Um, we get a little bit of some kind of kickback from the company, but it doesn't cost you any more. Nope. And we think it's a really good idea to have it. After all, what if something were to happen? You're it covered works for the catastrophic. It works just like travelers insurance, but unlike travelers insurance, you can have it for up to a year. Yep. So. Then you have to reapply. Yeah. There. All right, medical expenses. We really only had one medical expense for this particular month, and it was for um, his prescription. Yeah, the methotrexate. And we went to Pharmacia Guadalajara, and it's actually going to last him for 10 months. Yep. But it was, we're just calling it a, a one-off out-of-pocket expense uh, for this particular stay. Maybe I should have broke it up more, but it's yeah, okay. I mean, we spent the money there, yeah. and, you know, and, and so... There's going to be other times where in other places we're going to have other medical things that are going to pop in and they're True. going to pop up there. So True. the only real way of doing it is sort of showing it there. I mean, if we broke it down, it's going to run us, you know, that uh, medication is going to run about a little under $19 a month. And, yeah. you know, 
Would I have paid that in the U.S.? No, because they actually gave me the medication for free, but I had to pay $60 every time I went to go see my rheumatologist. Which was what, every? Six? Every three to four months. So, so you would have spent so, 120 It's a wash. So I mean, it, it really is a wash. And, and uh, you know, so based on that, okay, yeah, we're coming out ahead a little bit, you know, and as long as the condition remains the same, I can continue to take the medication the way I was. Eventually, I'm going to probably need to get checked. Well, some of you already know I need to get checked, but that's, you know, that's a whole other story. <laughs> I would agree with that. Okay. Uh, the next thing were personal expenses. So these would be the items that would be like haircuts, um, petty manis, massages, things Damn, like that. didn't do a petty mani, didn't do a massage. You didn't do one, one of those. We did get a haircut. And, and we're throwing in things like, um, you know, if we have somebody come and clean the house, if we take our laundry to a laundry service. So the only things we had for our stay in San Luis Potosí was a trip to the barber shop for him and a trip to Lavanderia. Yep. And that's it. Yep. So that came to uh, 406 pesos or $24 for the month. Yep. It's pretty affordable. We went out to eat, I don't know how many times, I'm trying to think, uh... at least three. Four, because you did one. I, that's right. I went to the, I went to the uh, meatball and wings place while right. you were in in KC. Right. And then we uh, went to uh, that one restaurant. Then, our yeah. first visit, our first day out with Paulette and Mark, we went to yep. that place. And that also includes getting the KFC delivered that first day we got there, because by the yep. time we got done hiking all those stairs and everything else, it was like, oh hell no. Yeah. Somebody needs to bring we us We actually food. ordered Uber Eats, if you yep. can believe that. And we typically would not do that, but it was so affordable to do so. So we, we had the Uber Eats. We had the meal the first time we went out with Mark and Paulette. Then we had the time. Then we had Arlene, Paulette, and, and Annie Vett, and, and Mark. And we had both breakfast and, and lunch. lunch. Yep. Then And you had your wings And place. I had my wings. Um, thinking that is it for our eating out. Oh, wait. We actually ate out once at the mall. We did KFC at the mall. No, that was in uh, El Tejado. Yeah, that was Veracruz. Never mind. Yeah. It's hard to remember. Wrong city. <laughs> but uh, we didn't we didn't eat out a lot. No. And when we did eat out, I found for the most part that the food was very affordable. Twenty seven fifty three in pesos. And that was $160 for the month. And that includes all of his trips for churros. So it was really only $20 that we spent on, in restaurants then. Oh, okay. <laughs> all the churros. Too funny. All right, for transportation, honestly, we had one fill up with gasoline. And that's mm -hmm. all we had. Uh, that was 1,038 pesos or 60 dollars USD. And I think the only reason I filled up was because we were about to leave. Basically. Yeah. We, we walked everywhere. We yeah. We didn't drive unless we were going out to one of the big stores. So utilities. We really didn't have utilities per se because we're in an Airbnb. But we do have cell phone plans and we have Starlink as yep. our backup internet which we really used a lot in San Luis Potosi. So yep. We really did. Uh, we spent a total of 4,003 pesos, or $232 a month USD. Which majority of that, I mean, three quarters of that is basically the cell phone plan. The cell phone plan is, is over $142 a month. Yep. And we don't mind paying that right now because I'm earning the money and, and the job kind of... Well, it's it. just, it's nice that you have a US number if anybody needs to call that... You yeah, know. there's like things like that, but the Telcel, I literally spend like around $11 every 30 days and top it up. So that's like nothing. And the rest of that was Starlink internet service. So this does not include anything such as his cigars, 
streaming services like Netflix or Spotify, gifts, mail forwarding services, or any subscriptions that we have, such as things like magazine subscriptions, well, yeah. website subscriptions, website. or anything that deals with our YouTube, which we have a number of subscriptions no. associated with that. None of that's been included in this. So the grand total for our expenses for accommodations, activities, groceries, insurance, medical, personal services, restaurants, transportation, and utilities for one month of living in San Luis Potosí came to a grand total of 55,281 pesos or $3,213, a little above our goal, which also comes out to $115 a day. Per day. So yeah, we were a little above our goal. And, and realistically, that number we blew at the grocery store. We would have been under had we not blown that at, at the grocery we store. We just went crazy. I mean, literally. We went crazy at the grocery store, guys. Crazy. Crazy. Uh, we, mm, I'm still, I'm still in shock. Yeah, I'm still in shock. I can't believe we spent that much, and we actually did. It, mm. Sazakia costs us two thousand four hundred forty dollars a month. San Miguel was three thousand four hundred three dollars a month. And San Luis Potosí three thousand two hundred fourteen dollars a month. So Zakia was the least expensive, but there's a really good reason for it. That was rent. That wasn't Airbnb. Airbnb makes money and they add extra fees on it so that when if you're somebody who's renting out an Airbnb, you set your price level based on how much you want to come in and that price level is higher because there's a percentage going to Airbnb. So Airbnb typically makes about 40% on a set price. Now, if we paid rent in Zakia and it was only $800 a month plus a few extra for utilities, it would have ran us maybe close to $1,000 a month. If we had actually paid rent in San Miguel instead of Airbnb, that rent with utilities included would have ran us about the same. It would have been a little under $1,000 a month. And if we had actually paid rent instead of Airbnb in San Luis Potosí, it would have ran us a little under $900 a month. So that's why there's a big difference between Zakia and the others is simply because we paid rent, not Airbnb. So overall, I think where we really blew the money, partly is groceries, especially in San Luis Potosí. Well, if, if, if we just spent normal, you know, $500 a month on groceries like we normally do, we would have hit the bu budget. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's that, that, there it is right there. We would have hit the budget if mm -hmm. we didn't go crazy with the groceries. Or the churros. Or but I mean, I'm just... <laughs> you and the churros. I, I actually have to admit, I do miss the churros. Yes. Well, I miss the hardine and everything. I mean, that just was, was so convenient and, and so pleasurable. And the churro was the icing on the cake. So, so I guess you bring it back to, is it a place we're going to consider? Well, we're going... We're, 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 go putting, we're putting it into the rotation to go do another month. So I'd say I, think, that's a I yes. think that's a, a strong. It's a strong contender. It, 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 yeah, that's a strong yeah. recommendation. That yeah, this this has potential. I agree. So, I agree. Now, what happens between now and when we eventually do get the opportunities? We're looking at the schedule, trying to figure out when, where, and how we're going to have to juggle this. When that occurs. Don't know. We'll figure it out. But it won't be in the same unit. No. No, it'll be, it'll be somewhere else and it'll be in a different neighborhood so we can sample another area. And so we're going to have to do the stairs. And, and no stairs. <laughs> okay, well that's our wrap up for our San Luis Potosi cost of living and the breakdown on what we did and didn't like and if it's going to make our list. That is it. So as always, we are Gringos R Us. Expats with a plan. Remember, we're, we're doing, doing it, it. You, you can too. And here's some more videos that you might want to take a look at. Hasta la próxima. Adios.